Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, the third uh, open event we're doing for the Infinite Thread Lift now. It's been an unbelievably popular treatment this year. Lots of interest, lots of people coming to see me with either online consultations and then face to face consultations. Uh, so I'm here really to share with you our recent experiences and our findings and our uh, our techniques and why we've introduced thread lift to our patients because I have been um, inundated with questions over the last years from many patients about is the why aren't you doing thread lifts can I get thread lifts and uh, and for good reason I've said I haven't done thread lifts up until this point and hopefully during this talk you'll understand why I've chosen this particular thread lift, which really is uh, on its stands out on its own compared to any other thread lift out there. So the infinite thread lift really is for anybody who does what the lady in this image is doing, who anyone's gone behind in front of the mirror and just wanted to just that little bit of lift, a little bit of can, why can't we do this? And we can get a similar effect with dermal fillers, maybe some skin tightening trimmers, but nothing that's really lasting long enough. People want something that lasts more than a year. They want something that lasts maybe five, to five years plus, 10 years plus. People really want the effects of a good facelift without the fear associated with a facelift, okay? Um, and we can now do that with our, with our amazing infinite thread lift. And what does it address really? Well, this is a, you know, this is an anatomical diagram illustration of the face. And what happens when the face starts to drop is that the retaining ligaments, so the retaining ligaments of the face, so the orbicularis retaining ligament around the eye, the cutaneous ligaments around the cheekbone, and then the masseteric cutaneous ligaments which support the jowl, and then obviously the other, the upper, the upper masseteric cutaneous ligaments which support the corner of the mouth. All of these actually start to soften with time and they aren't as tight as they were when we were in our 20s. And that is why the face starts to sag. Now, in a facelift, what happens is the surgeon will reposition these by pulling up what's called a SMAS layer, which is, overlies these ligaments, and it pulls them up with them. And he will excise any extra tissue that doesn't need to be there. So in other words, he'll, he'll cut it away, remove it, and the same for the skin. What we do with the infinite thread lift, we effectively attach the threads to these lig to the tissues which are attached to these ligaments and replace the, uh, reinforce the ligament strength. So basically we're giving you kind of like bionic ligaments. So in other words, we're not pulling your skin, we're not uh, filling your face with any fillers or fat transfer, we're actually just repositioning the supporting tissue to where it once was. And this is, you can see, this is a cross section. There's an ear, this is the skin, and this is the muscle layer and fat layer. And this is what a surgeon would view. This is his view. It's very important not to compare the infinite thread lift with any other thread lift that you have heard of, right? And I wish this would not be called a thread lift because the other thread lifts really haven't really met, met anyone's expectations, especially mine. Let's compare them. Well, there's the Silhouette Soft, which is probably the most popular thread lift around. And typically it started off with two threads on each side and then it went to six and now it's gone to 10. The duration really isn't longer than two years. But in my experience, when I've spoken to patients, spoken to colleagues, they very rarely see that. Patients typically are disappointed at three months, need more threads added. The 10 thread protocol has only been in place for about 18 months. Um, and so, um, and they do recommend you do need to continue with some dermal fillers afterwards. So it's not a one-stop uh, shop. It doesn't sort of fix everything. And as a result of that, with the high cost and the repeated treatments and the additional treatments required, there's relatively low patient satisfaction. PDO threads, on the other hand, are more like collagen stimulators than lifters. So they're similar to dermal fillers like Alance or uh, Sculptra. They last about a year, you need more than two sessions and you do need to continue with fillers. So again, if you're looking for something that emulates a facelift, neither of those solutions, options are going to give you what you're looking for. The infinite thread lift 
we play six to eight threads. So six typically for the facelift and eight if we want to add a neck lift to the area. The duration, well, so far this technique has been around for seven years and the effects have been lasting that long. That's how long, so in other words, it's a pretty permanent solution, very similar to a facelift solution. Generally speaking, one session is required, okay? So, you know, you only have to factor that in once. Do you need fillers afterwards? Not for the mid face, not for the cheek area, not for the jowl, absolutely not. If you choose, you will have lip fillers if you want to, if you want nose fillers, yes, but not for the areas with dressings. And because of this, this one treatment, there's no need for associated treatments with it, You're, there's a very high patient satisfaction because there's low risk as well. What it does, it gives you the most natural looking results. You will not look pulled, you will not look um, like you've been through a wind tunnel. Listen, you may do initially in the healing period in the first one to two weeks, but the end result, that's not what we want. Okay, we want you to look entirely natural and fresh looking. The, the treatment is performed under local anesthetic. You have some sedation, as, which is applied as a nasal spray, and you have local anesthetic applied. And we even try to take the sting out of the anesthetic by mixing it with a solution which does exactly that. It makes it more comfortable to be applied. And during the procedure, which lasts typically three to four hours, if we're doing a face or a face and neck, you will, um, so three to four hours is when you're in the clinic for, the procedure itself takes about 90 minutes to two hours. Um, it's a very calm procedure. It's a very calm experience. We're talking gently to you. You're talking back to us. Sometimes you drift off. Sometimes you watch the telly. Sometimes you listen to the music. It's a very, very relaxing experience. Um, the results will last you years. And the best thing about this, they're completely reversible. If for whatever reason, we don't, the threads do not need to be there anymore, whether it's for patient preference or whether there's a, um, uh, 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 let's say you need an operation on your face, whatever reason, we can remove those threads in the outpatient setting, right? So that's a very good, uh, uh, very, very reassuring for me that was. This is an illustration of how the threads are placed. So for the face, we typically place three threads on each side and the insertion point is on the temple, over the temple area, just in the hairline. The point is the size of a needle. I use a blood test needle to make the insertion point. There are no scalpels in this procedure. And what you'll find, the first thread goes all the way up to the top of the head and this acts as the anchor. This is what holds your thread in place. And then the other half of the thread is passed with a cannula underneath the skin and comes out just by the nose label line. And this is what lifts the cheek area and this kind of gives about 80% of the lift for the lower face. The same with the middle one and this one takes the corner of the mouth, the marionette, and then finally the one for the, um, the jowl. And then if you did the neck, we would do one more neck, so a fourth thread just behind the ear on the mastoid process and then to the central point neck and to make the top part of the neck tighter to try to get that angle of your neck in place. And what you can see here is what, this is a magnified version of the thread. Um, they, they, they are, there's the cogs and then it's made of a silicon and a um, coated with polyester. So it's a polyester coated with silicon. This has been tested, it's passed by all the CE marks and it's heavily tested in the labs. And uh, this product is inert. It does not react with your body. It does not cause scarring. It does not cause collagen stimulation. It's completely inert, like many other permanent implants that we use in medicine. Just by the way, everybody, if you have any questions, please post them. I'll see them come up and I'll try to address them as I go along. Or if not, then now I'll address them when Teresa is speaking as well, all right? Um, so here's Teresa, and this is the lovely, beautiful lady you're going to meet later. And you'll see how she looked immediately after the procedure, right? So we see why did Teresa have it? You can see she's got, slow, first of all, she's got some slight jowling of her lower face, slight marionetting, and the cheek pad here has dropped to this area here, just below the, where the cheekbone is. And you can see straight afterwards where her exit points are, 
and this is her immediately at the end of the procedure. And yes, there's a slightly exaggerated pull on the lateral side of the eye and her cheekbones are a little bit more fuller than we would expect, but that's because there's anesthetic fluid there and swelling has started to kick in. What we'll see here is two days later, the, the ports are already healed up nicely. Her cheeks are starting to swell a bit because the swelling is continuing for the next three to eight days. And by two weeks, the swelling's starting to come down. You can see her jawline is tightened beautifully. She doesn't look like she's been through a facelift. It's because she hasn't. She's had a thread lift, an infinite thread lift, which is as good as a facelift for many people. And this is how she looks at a month. And at a month, this is pretty much your end result, all right? So we see how she's, look at her face from before and after, a very natural and pleasing outcome. And this is Teresa four months after the procedure and how the result has maintained. This is another lady we, tr we treated recently. And just to show you the markings, she had her face and neck treated. So we put the markings on, they're just around the corner of the mouth, just below the, the, no the nose, and then onto the jowl and the cheek and onto the neck. And you'll see her straight away at the end of the procedure. She's got a lot of fluid on board, so she's a bit puffy, but you can see there's a big lift. And then we'll see her nine days later. Okay, this is a nine day later procedure. You'll see she's got a little bit of pulling on one side a bit more than the other, but of course she swells more on this side. This is all gonna even out. We treated her about 10 days ago. So she's very recent, this lady. Look at her jawline, look at her neckline, completely uh, rejuvenated, um, fascinating, fantastic outcomes. So what do you need to do if you want to go ahead with this procedure? or if you want to find out more. Well, first of all, if you were to go ahead procedure, it's very important you're not on any blood thinning medications such as aspirin or ginkgo biloba or any vitamins that cause blood thinning, such as vitamin E, and also any uh, clobidrogel or any medication from your doctor that thin the blood. Please, we don't want you to have any current illness, we want you to be perfectly fit, um, and you need someone to take you home because you will not be fit to drive home. Um, Please prepare to have the first week off work. You won't be on your A game because you'll have a few headaches. Uh, it'll be sore around the temple area. It'll be sore at the top of the head and your jaw will feel a bit tight. So make sure there's food at home for you. Beforehand, what we'd like you to do two days before is make sure, you, make sure that you've got been to the hairdressers before your procedure because you're not gonna want them touching your hair for the next two to four weeks. Your head will be a bit tender. Um, the day before your procedure, please get some ice packs and put them in the freezer. We do issue those on a prescription for you. But do not take any Nurofen or aspirin beforehand because that does thin the blood. Sleep well. And on the day, we, we would want you to wash your hair with antiseptic shampoo that's been provided. And um, bring your ice packs with you and make sure you have a good breakfast. After the procedure, it's pretty straightforward. You can do whatever you want, except don't swim the day after the procedure and don't stroke your pets the day after, and that mainly because we don't want you contaminating the, the uh, entry points. But two days later, you can do whatever you want, really, as long as it's not excessively brutal. During the first week, as I said, do rest. Please take the medication as prescribed. There's a lot of medication being prescribed. It's not that you need it all, it's there just in case you need it, okay? Your best friend is going to be the anti-inflammatories and if you need pain relief after that there is, there's, a, there's two or three different types of pain relief medication. We advise you how to wash the face. You start from the bottom upwards so that you don't, that you, if you do that, push the threads, you're pushing them upwards, not downwards. During the, keep, as I said, keep pets away and avoid swimming pools. And please, please, please be mindful of the fact that in the first week, your results are going to be exaggerated. Everything will be exaggerated. It is not the end result. Uh, um, and so we have a few people who sometimes get a bit anxious about that. Um, after three days, the threads will be pretty much attached where we want them to be. You will notice some clicking sensations as you move your jaw around. You might find your jawline is a bit tighter, difficult to speak sometimes. Do not worry, that is to be expected. The painkillers are there to help you through this first three or four days, okay? Um, after about three weeks, the clicking 
that has. And what it is, that's just the threads moving in the swelling, in the extra fluid that's causing swelling. That will disappear within about three weeks. At two weeks, you can find you can pretty much return to normal activity. I would say at the end of the first week, you're starting to return to normality. Your temples will be the most sensitive part during your recovery, and that will continue to lessen. It is, can sometimes be prominent, present still after about three or four months, uh, three or four weeks down the line. Um, yeah, as I said, you might notice there will be swelling in that first month. And as that reduces, there may be little hollows, irregular hollows around your face. That is not the threads, that's the swelling coming down unevenly. So do not worry, do not worry about that. And after about a month, they tend to settle down. So the, one of the biggest, most frequent questions we get asked, am I too young or old for this? Well, listen, if you're too old really would be say that if you have got lots of co comorbidities and the skin is way too lax, but the eldest patient I've treated so far is about 73, 75 years old. And the youngest patient I've treated so far is 40. Okay, so you know, you know, you're not too young. It really depends whether the first of all, there's a need and two, does it fit in with your uh, lifestyle choices and goals? If you've already had a facelift, absolutely you can have this done again. This will actually, it's, it's good still, because this, you know, so, uh, because this will augment your facelift and allow you to get good results still. And if you've just had dermal fillers, I'll probably wait three to six months before you proceed with this, just so we know that the dermal fillers are on their way out. Um, yes, I've said earlier, the threads can be removed. And what can go wrong? Well. First of all, there's a small risk of infection, as with any procedure, we give you an antibiotic shot. If, let us say, there's a late infection where maybe a thread has become infected, we would have to remove that thread and send it to the lab for analysis, give you the antibiotics, and then at a later date, once you've healed, recite that thread, all right? Um, you could get some slight asymmetry, potentially, uh, but usually most people are asymmetrical beforehand. Um, the thread technically could be visible, but again, that's not in that we don't see that. And if it was the case, we just replace it and put a new thread in. Um, so very little can go wrong. There's no risk of nerve damage because we're not cutting the nerve. We're not using a scalpel. There is no scalpel using this procedure. It's not in my kit. Um, and scarring, absolutely not. We're just using pinpoint needles, just like the same size you have when you have a blood test. If you compare this to a surgical facelift, you will see that, uh, that we use a local anesthesia, we use um, a, uh, the durations are very similar, a hospital stay is not required, there's a very low complication rate, there's low to medium pain compared to a higher pain per recovery after a facelift, and you need about three to seven days off work maximum, whereas with a facelift minimum of two weeks. The cost would be for a facelift, typical, a good facelift, about 10,000, an equity, a good infinite thread lift, four to six thousand pounds as well. And here are some examples from Dr. Fumantese who invented the procedure. This is a 30 to 40 year old after two years, very pleasant results. Again, these are two years later results. These pictures are all, all ethnicities can be treated very pleased. Look how the squareness of her face in the before photo has become much more oval and heart shaped in her lateral photo. Men as well can be treated um, and again, this would typically be, this lady really would do well with a, a peel, a skin peel to help reduce her pigmentation and, and treat the fine surface crepiness that she has. This is a, a 70 year old lady and she's got a nice tight jawline um, one month after the procedure. We can see two years down the line and again, two years down the line. So very pleasing results, which are long lasting. Um, and here, oh, now it's time to meet Teresa. Um, Hello, I'm, how are you? Oh, Hello, how everyone. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. Very good. I'm good. So it's great that you can join us. Calling yes, from, cool. you're all in Switzerland today. I am in Switzerland indeed. I'm here. It's been a nice okay. Sunday. Yeah, all good. So we've got a couple of questions. And um, so the first thing is, do we need to wait for existing fillers to disappear for best results? I think I answered that by saying not really, they just need to be, um, uh, don't, have the, don't have the thread as soon as you've had the fillers. I'd probably give it a three to six month birth and then do the thread lift. Um, when am I available to book? Well, 
we can book on the app and I'm more than happy to see you in the next one or two weeks for your pre-op consultate for your first appointment. And what's the worst case scenario for healing? Um, well, I think, and what is the pain level during healing? So I think, I'll tell you what, Teresa, why don't you ask that, answer that question first, if I may. Okay. Um, what is the pain level during healing? Okay, um, Ravi knows, I've been with him for quite a few years now, and I am a complete wimp. I am very, you know, anything to do with needles, so I was very scared of the procedure. I was very scared what was the pain going to be like. I have to say that it was, during the procedure, there was none whatsoever, nothing at all. I didn't feel anything apart from, you know, obviously you feel that someone is pulling something up there but it's not pain it's just that sensation of something tugging tugging away and then after the procedure your particularly for me was the scalp the scalp was tender you know was you know you would definitely wouldn't want to go to the headrests and have a head massage or anything like that but it was completely bearable i mean we get quite a lot of um you know painkillers and, and loads of other things that to be honest in my case i did not even use them i did not need them i just used painkillers for the first three days you know um and particularly at night i didn't even use them as regularly as you know you recommended i didn't need it in my case so it wasn't something that i would actually describe as pain it was just really the fact that you know the scalp the head was tender. On the face, obviously you're not massaging the face, you know, you're not going to want to be having a facial and a nice massage for you know a couple of weeks after you have the procedure. Um, I don't believe it's even advisable to do so, but it's not because you are feeling pain as such. And like I've said, I am really I mean quite a wimp when it comes to you know physical pain. And um, but I wouldn't describe it as pain. It's just that you you know your and for me, it's actually even more the scalp than the actual face that was tender and, you know, a bit more sensitive, obviously, to, to the touch. But I wouldn't describe the procedure as being something that would be painful. Definitely not during the procedure and after was something was completely bearable. Like I said, I took the painkillers for about three days and particularly at night to make sure I would sleep and wouldn't be, you know, feeling uncomfortable. Teresa, that's great. There's a, um, is the... Did you have any problems sleeping at the start? Uh, no, not really. I mean, the, 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 the first night, literally after, just after I've had the procedure, perhaps I shouldn't be saying this, but I, you know, I um, swallowed my painkiller with a couple of glasses of champagne to make sure that I would That's be okay. Good. So I slept, I slept like a baby. I slept incredibly well. No problem it at all. Advisable. <laughs> like the the only thing like i said again is because you know your scalp is slightly tender when you know when you are falling asleep you know you sort of make sure that you know you're not really pulling on your you know pushing your head you know too strongly against the pillow or you're probably a little bit more careful but that's your own you know that's your own feeling your own sensation where you sort of are a bit conscious that you've had something done you're a little bit careful but i didn't have any difficulty falling asleep or i wasn't you know woken up because i was having pain or anything like that not at all absolutely i mean i think that's a really good question because i think often people are told that when they have fillers they have to sleep in a certain position mm -hmm. and i've never really subscribed to that and and with this really no there's no real position just we would i'd rather you be comfortable you're not going to move threads mm -hmm. based on your sleeping position right mm -hmm. so you can be reassured of that um there's another question that's come through really about uh why did you have it done Okay, why did I have it done? Well, like I've said, I've been a patient of Ravico for quite a few years. I am now 52 years old. And, you know, even though I take very good care of my skin, you know, I'm in the, uh, in the sector of, you know, beauty, wellness, aesthetics myself. So I'm obviously very conscious of the good ingredients, the good products to use on my skin, the treatments to do. And I've always done my profile, of, you know, my, you know, Botox and all the rest of it. There are things which is basically you know, the law of nature, even though you might be genetically, you know, be quite lucky, you know, have better genes or worse genes, we're all going to age. Some people show signs of it earlier, others a little bit later, and the law of gravity basically strikes us all. And for me, it was the something that I've been discussing with Ravi, um, probably for a couple of years, I would say, which is the fact that, you know, 
down here, this sort of starts to sag a little bit. It's not, not nothing as drastic as if I would felt, you know, I'm ready to go under the knife. I'm not saying I won't do it probably in a few years, but I thought I'm still too young and it's not dramatic enough to justify a procedure, you know, a surgical procedure and all the risks that obviously that it involves. And that's why I thought that thread lifts were, because obviously I've, I've read a lot about them, um, I thought this could be the right solution. I wasn't convinced by any of the other thread lifts on offer on the market because um, personally I discussed them with Ravi. Um, I thought that you know the investment is quite high for actually what you what you get in return and the and the duration of, of those thread lifts, while this spe specific one, the infinite thread lift, is something that is permanent you know i'm sure that you've explained uh, the, the, the permanent the meaning of the permanent word they are backed up by plastic surgeons which for me was a real um you know a, a real sign of approval because normally plastic surgeons are very um um how would i say quite a little bit wary of thread lifts not they not a lot of them um actually think they are that good but this specific one is actually backed up by plastic surgeons and that is the reason that gave me the um the reassurance for me to do it because from a, you know from a, an aesthetic procedure point of view i knew what was actually going to be achieved which is basically the repositioning of your um tissues where they were when you were a little bit younger so pulling them back up without being um, having a completely drastic effect in the sense that it's going to change you know your features which is something that when you go and have a an actual surgical facelift, you're always a little bit wary of, oh, what am I going to look like? What are they going to do? Are they going to pull too much, pull too little? What is that going to be like? So he was really just like that little tweak that, you know, particularly as a 50, you start to notice that little couple of millimeters that things start to sag and everything went a little bit up, like I'm sure Ravi showed you in that beautiful photo of me, not before I had the procedure. Thank you, thank you. Um, there's a couple of questions for me coming here now. It's like, um, so do the threads eventually have to be removed? What happens to threads? Do they need to be removed? So it's all about being removed in the threads. So really, um, look, the threads don't have to be removed unless there's a medical need, all right? These threads will outlive you, all right? Okay, <laughs> they, they're permanent, okay? So, but, if you want to have them removed or needed to have them removed, that can be done in an outpatient setting. So if you wanted to have a traditional facelift, let us say years down the line, um, first of all, we would probably recommend you have a couple more threads added instead because it's safer. So you can add to the threads later, all right? Should there be further sagging, right? But should you want a traditional facelift, yes, they can be removed. And it's a very simple procedure to do that, or this plastic surgeon can do that as well. So that's not um, that 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 that's one of the best things about the threads that they are removable in a relatively simple way. Um, one of the reasons there's the, the color of the threads is there; it's purple. Is that that that's it, it's because there's no purple tissue in your body, and when you open when you do surgery, anything that you see that is purple that is not meant to be there. That's a foreign body. And that's why many implants are colored in a certain way so they can't be confused with normal tissue. Um, there's a few hairdressing questions here, which I'm not sure I'm the best place to answer that really, given my bar mitt, given that. lockdown. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you saw me early April, I skinned it. Um, so uh, this is a two months growth now. Um, so listen, hairdresser, we say really don't go to the hairdressers for a good two weeks after the procedure, your head's going to be a bit tender. But if you wanted to blow your, color your hair afterwards, I would say minimum of two days, wait for those wounds to close up. So when you come for your post-op check with me, which is about two or three days later, I'll just check that the entry points and exit points are all healed and closed. And if they are, then you can um, start coloring your hair yourself. Teresa, maybe you can answer this question. How long before you can comfortably blow dry your hair? For me, um, like I said, you know, I was, the, the, the scalp was tender. I think I, I took me, I think I went to the hairdresser for my blow dry because I didn't miss them being, you know, completely flat. It was in the third week, you know. Um, even then, I have to say, you know, to blow dry the hair wasn't really, you know, that bad. But you know, they very often they ask you, would you like to have a head massage? I didn't 
really have the head massage the first time I went to headrest, which was probably, I don't know, two and a half weeks after I had the procedure, because your, you know, your, your head, your scalp is still a little bit tender. Like I said, it's not painful as such. It's just that you, you know, you don't particularly want anyone pressing on it or massaging it. But after, like I said, I think it was in the third week that I went to have the hairdressers for the blow dry, and that wasn't really, you know, an issue or problem at all. Um, I've been asked, can I tighten the threads over time? Um, that's not possible to tighten the threads over time, but should there be a need for further lifting, we can add the threads, okay, in time, right? Um, that has not been required for five to seven years, right? So that's been pretty, so I suppose if you have it when you're 40, when you come to 48, 50, you might need an extra thread or two, right? Mm -hmm. The aim is that we try to put the least amount of threads in people, then we need, then you, then is the, the the absolute least amount necessary. Um, uh, and so in future, Teresa, should you wish to have, should there be a need in like six, seven, eight years time, we would just add one or two threads to the points that require it. Can you feel the threads now, Teresa? No, not at all. And I mean, I'm turned here. I mean, this is a Zoom. I just said to uh, Ravi, I'm not wearing any makeup at all. You don't see anything. You can touch everywhere. You just don't feel anything whatsoever you don't see and you really don't feel anything i've had my you know normal facials you know i massage my face with all my potions and serums and everything else um no not at all nothing at all i think one important thing perhaps to 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 say to ravi to add to what you were saying that really convinced me also about having this procedure and you know how much research i did in addition to everything that you told me is the fact that um there's also the, um, I would say, the, the stimulation effect that, the, that your tissues have because they've been repositioned in a way. So they say that the microcirculation is like also increases or, you know, gets better again and actually has a, reju you know, a rejuvenation effect on the skin itself. So it's like, you know, your skin um, also gets better because one of the explanations that they give to it is the fact that because your tissues are put back where they actually should be before you, you know, they start to sag. So that actually has a positive influence and stimulates, you know, again, also the natural collagen production and everything else, which is an added value to the whole thing. Absolutely. And um, so just there's been a couple of questions here. This isn't just for women, okay? Men and women can have this procedure for sure. Um, uh, just naturally we see more women in our practice than men. I think the ratio is about nine to one or nine and a half to, uh, to a half. So 95% like females, 90% females in, a, in most aesthetic practices. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, it is available. It is suitable for men and women for sure. I think we have our first male patient booked in for next week. So um, yeah. So um, I just want to check we've asked so far, the questions, um, the headache. Was it a constant headache, Teresa, that you suffered from? No, not at all. I mean, it wasn't, like I even said, it wasn't even like a headache and it wasn't even something that was, you know, like there all the time, like a migraine or something like that. I mean, you don't really suffer from migraines, but the idea I have, you know, when you, uh, it's something that for, for me particularly was more of a, I keep, calling it, you know, the, the scalp being tender. So it's something that at the beginning, particularly the first, I would say, what, the first couple of days, two, three days, um, it, you know, you felt it, you know, this tenderness. After that, it was something that, you know, you could perhaps do the whole, you know, the whole day not having anything. And then probably towards the end of the day, when you're probably a little bit more tired, you would feel again that feeling of a little bit of tenderness on, you know, on the scalp. But it wasn't anything that was constant at all. And I think, as I said at the beginning, um, you know, from all those, you know, pills and tablets that we got, I ended up only really taking the painkillers um, just at night. And I think it was only for about a week maximum that I took them. So just to, that, I think that's an important point. When people um, go ahead with this procedure, I issue you with quite a few prescription items, right? There are various different types of painkillers and anti-inflammatories um, to reduce swelling and control pain. And some of the painkillers have side effects, so we have to issue some medications that counteract those side effects. Now, 
I would rather you had everything that we could possibly need with you at home and then we draw upon them as required rather than you saying you've got this and then I need to issue another prescription and that that could be 24 hours before you get that prescription so that's why I issue you with a little little pharmacy at home so that you've got everything you need but I don't expect you to take them all all right it's just there for you there's a good question here really uh, if the muscle has been pulled up what happens to the lax skin do you get wrinkles listen you you should not get those wrinkles like you see with other threads okay there may be initially during the initial healing but by the time you get to about three two to three weeks that will have softened with this as the swelling has gone down if there is any wrinkling that's present after that i will deal with that and it, it you know it's it's but no, you should not get wrinkles. The best way to find out what you could look like with an infinite thread lift is to get yourself a hand mirror, lie yourself flat on the floor or flat on a bed with no pillow and just look up and you'll see that the vertical gravity is gone and it's now gone, it now lifts and you'll have a good idea of what you would look like. And, and th the thread lift will not do any more than that but also pay attention to any folds you get by your ear or the back of your jaw, okay? Because that'll give you an idea of what you may get with an infinite thread lift. If there are some mild wrinkles here, very mild, they can be treated with some dermal fillers or some skin tightening procedures. Now, which brings me on to the next point. Afterwards, there are two main procedures which we don't want people to have uh, as an aesthetic procedure afterwards and they are any treatments that involve heating the skin that could be ul therapy so ul high focused ultrasound otherwise known as high food or radio frequency treatments to heat the tissue which are collagen stimulating we worry that they may weaken the thread okay so that is why those two energy based treatments are not uh, permitted afterwards but microneedling skin peels uh, Botox, skin boosters, Profilo, lasers, they're all fine. They're all absolutely fine. Um, so there's a couple of questions. Does anybody still have cheek fillers afterwards? Generally speaking, you shouldn't need to. You shouldn't need to. It just depends on your own personal preference, really. Okay. Um, might you need fillers in any creases that are revealed? Again, that's if there are there shouldn't be any creases on the whole okay the aim of this is that you shouldn't need anything to mask if you there are that many creases this may not be the right procedure for you and you may require a facelift because that extra skin may need to be removed all right so that's very important and i think what you would, the question you've just had about the fillers i think one important thing to say too is that you know with the infinite thread lift is not you know you're not gaining any volume it's not like something you're going to go like this you get a slight and I say slight swelling because, uh, you know, I noticed it because obviously I know my face and it was literally the day after the procedure. And but I still, you know, got on a plane because I needed to come back to Switzerland and people that, you know, didn't notice anything. I was traveling. I was doing everything just the day after I had the procedure. But, you know, you're not getting any more volume on your cheeks it just everything sort of goes up slightly and like you said it's really then a question of personal preference whether you you know you want to enhance you know your cheekbones more or not to have the you know to have the have filler work or not yeah um quick point about ultrasound diagnostic ultrasound to look for um to look at the tissue to see if there's any cysts or anything wrong with the tissue uh, that's perfectly fine. It's when we're looking at ultrasonic treatments to tighten the tissue to, and to lift the tissue, that's what is contraindicated. So, so just to clarify that. Um, yeah, and does weight gain or weight loss affect results over time? Absolutely. Weight affects everything, including your face, as we all know. All right. Okay, so should you gain weight, I suspect you will get more jowly, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. and there'll be more pressure, more weight on the threads, so therefore it won't do as good a job as it was before. And again, likewise, if you go anorexic, uh, really thin, and there's hardly any weight on your face, there's a possibility you could see the thread. There's a small possibility. So mm -hmm. absolutely, you know, when we say permanent, and this should be, we're assuming people are generally staying stable, 
their weight stable and they're fit and healthy. When the body becomes unwell, anything can happen with anything. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, people often ask me this, can you use a thread to pull up hooded eyes? No, because the right treatment for that procedure is a blepharoplasty. All right. Mm -hmm. This will not, you will get a slight brow lift, a slight lifting of the corners of the eyes, but it's not enough to pull up a hooded eye. That is the wrong procedure. Yeah. Um, we've got loads of questions coming through. Can you have neck threads only? Yes, you can. It all depends on uh, what your neck appears like, um, you know, and also, um, uh, you know, so often if the neck involves, the, if the jawline is a, is a bit uh, uneven and the jowl's there and the neck is contributing to that, potentially you might need um, the face and neck. But if it's just the neck that you're concerned about, we could apply just the neck as well. But it's not really for the saggiest of necks, it's mainly for the necks that are just starting to go. All right, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, um, pretty good. Um, yeah, so Teresa, did you have any bruising? I know you had a little bit, do you wanna share what it was like? Bruising, I had a, a, a little bit of bruising actually that showed up on the, just on the second day, I would say, probably the evening of the second day, but it was just on one side, but it was nothing, you know, like I said, nothing major. I put a little bit of a, I think it was actually on my right side, so on this side, I had a bit of bruising but around here, and um, just a little bit of makeup covered it. That was it. I mean, nothing, you know, like sometimes you can get a little bit of bruising when, you know, would do a little bit of a, um, filler work or something like that so it wasn't anything dramatic at all i had some a little bit like i said just on one side that makeup could you know a little bit of concealer really but I covered it up quite easily and it just went away i think that's typical i mean we've had one or two patients that have had um mm -hmm. a, a lower bruise around the lower eye and it's a bit swollen um we've had people with swollen lower lids um but I think on the whole, people have gone, done very well from this. Mm -hmm. Now, just before we finish, we come to the end, I'm just gonna put a poll out there for you. And if people could hopefully get this, mm -hmm. just if you were to go ahead with a thread lift, how soon would you proceed? If you could just give me an idea. And then if you can vote now, it's, and then we'll, uh, that'll help us throughout this. This is quite live, it's like watching um, something on TV. Like, I don't know, like you're- <laughs> actually, it's like so. Um, <laughs> We've got some more questions while we're waiting for this to yeah. complete. When you say someone at 40 had the procedure, do you think it's too young in general? Not really, because look, at 40, typically people are looking towards having dermal fillers, for example, to, and this is a real alternative to dermal fillers, all right? And in the right patient, this is the most cost-effective way to maintain mm -hmm. their appearance and, and, and really fight that aging process of where that inevitability of where the face is going to start to drop. Okay. So, you know, in practice, I would like to be offering this to people who are considering fillers. And that's what I do now. Anyone who's considering dermal fillers, because I know they're going to be coming to see me every six to nine months for dermal fillers for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years. And that's exactly why I was looking for a thread lift the right alternative, because I wanted people to, um, there are limits to what you can do with fillers, all right? Um, and you cannot reproduce these results with dermal fillers, all right? Um, I think that's a very important point that, you have, that, you, that you've just said that, you know, me obviously as a patient is that very often, uh, I mean, I am naturally a little bit naturally chubby, which I used to hate when I was younger, a bit happier now that I'm a bit older, but very often what happens is that people start doing fillers a little bit young to try and get obviously that volume back again and then they end up actually being a little bit too full and comes to a point that you know it, it just gets too much and you might even affect like your features while this just gives you exactly that natural result because it's putting the tissue back where it should be thank you thank you so the results of the poll really showed that most people are looking to have this procedure done within the next three to six months so this is perfect uh this is perfect it's really what i want people to be doing is fact finding fact finding fact finding okay you know people who know me uh, will know that I, I will not sell it to you i'll tell you the facts and i'll give you as much information as i put that's available to me to give to you to help you make up your mind okay independent places to go to for this. Well, there's really, I'll just go to the thread and lift 
so threadandlifts.com website, which is the manufacturer, but also the doctor who invented this. He's got a fantastic website with a lot of detail, a lot of information, loads of before and after pictures. But just to give you an idea of this guy, I first heard about this procedure about three or so years ago. One of my new patients came and told me that she'd had this done and I was fascinated by the results. She looked amazing. And I was fascinated by the fact that she'd had a permanent thread lift that was reversible. So I contacted Dr. Fulmontese and he was very resistant to training myself because I wasn't a plastic surgeon, even though he is not a plastic surgeon. Okay. Uh, he's a GP like myself because he's found that he wanted plastic surgeons to do this because he was so protective over this procedure. Anyway, uh, when I decide to do something, generally I make sure it happens. I, badgered the guy for three years okay i attended lectures of his all the time asking 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 anyway finally we managed to he gave in and we went and visited him last the end of last october sometime and then again in january and um, we were and that, and i'm in regular contact with him and he's he's monitoring our work and he's very happy with the results he's given us feedback and tips and what to do uh, in situations so it's been fantastic support but i would just say go to his website he's got a typically uh candid way of explaining things um there's no fluff around it it's you can tell he's written it he's not had a marketeer write his copy in any way whatsoever he's very um, french <laughs> the way he explains like that <laughs> yeah so and, and generally speaking what you find with a lot of these treatments with a lot of the thread it will improve fine lines around the eyes around the lower face because the tissue circulation microcirculation has improved anyway i think we're going to call it a day there that's been nearly 50 minutes um i would just like to thank you very much teresa for joining us again you're welcome well i'm super happy with the procedure and yeah recommend it fully yeah thank you <laughs> and i'd like to thank everybody for joining in um, and thanks for participating in the poll um if anybody wants to ask any questions please and they haven't done yet please send me an email at dr jane at riverbankswellness.com or uh and and then you can book an appointment with me online for a consultation using the riverbanks app which can be downloaded from the um uh, uh app stores for whichever phone you've got and um and i'll be more than happy to see you and then, and then we'll see you face to face. But uh, thank you everybody for your time. And I hope you have a, stay safe and have a good evening. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, thank you Rafi, bye.